Hey, praise God. And the Bible says in the word of God that, listen, that we love one another. Amen. Love God above everybody else. Love God with your heart and then love everybody else above yourself. And in other words, if your life is dictated by the law of love, you're going to go the extra mile. Amen. But I tell you what I believe has happened in many lives and what can happen in many churches is that God picks us up out of the pit of sin. Praise God. He lifts us up, saves us, washes us, calls us, cleans us up. Man, lets us hear a little bit about standard. Boy, I tell you, when I got saved by God's grace, boy, God saved me out of the world. And I want you to know that, uh, that I didn't really know a whole lot. And I tell you, but I started learning some things. God began to work on my heart like I've been preached today. And boy, the Lord really started working in me. And But before long, you know what began to happen to me? God got me kind of cleaned up real good, got my hair cut, got a shirt on me, got some pants on me. Hey, man, got the earrings out of my ear, got, got the music in my uh, tape player changed, uh, got, got me in a good church. And before long, I began to look at myself and say, man, I'm doing pretty good. Right. See, I'll tell you, your flesh is sneaky. Mm -hmm. Amen. That old nature is sneaky because, you know, when I first got saved, brother, I want to tell you, man, it was my temptation, the things that the Lord was 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 help, having to help me with was, man, not smoking them. Lord, I don't want to be tempted with that. God, help me with that. Lord, I don't be tempted with these old things. But pretty soon I started getting victory over those things. And I tell you what, the, the flesh is content. As a matter of fact, I believe your flesh is quite content to live a separated life a life of toiling to the brink of exhaustion and all of these other things as long as you can get the glory for it. Amen? I'm telling you the truth today to where you can get up and do whatever it is you do and somebody says, boy, you did such a good job. And I want to tell you today that I really believe that the spirit-filled Christian demands more of himself than he does of others. I believe a spirit-filled Christian demands more of himself than he does of others. You can usually tell when you begin to get eat up with pride because you begin all of a sudden to try to make people go. And you know what the Bible teaches in Galatians chapter number five, chapter number five, chapter number six? It talks about the fruit of the spirit versus the works of the flesh. You know what you begin to do? And you know what many churches begin to do? They begin to be a manufacturing. They manufacture stuff. I'm going to manufacture this work, but the Bible says what the Spirit works in is fruit. You don't manufacture fruit. Fruit grows. Fruit is cultivated. Listen, fruit is something that begins to work it work in and work itself out. Amen. And what I'm trying to say is that these people begin to be so, I believe, that they let their first love because they begin to look what Jesus had done in their lives and done in their church, and they begin to take the credit for it. What do we do? The Bible says remember. Remember, what do you need to remember? You need to remember that you're, that you're still just an old sinner saved by God's grace, amen? That's what you need to remember. That's what I need to remember today. I tell you, people have the eye. They forget about that. We forget about that. I, I do not believe a person is right with God if they think they're better than anybody else in the community. I do not believe that a man of God or a Christian or anybody else is right with God if they think they're better than the drunk. We're better than the cross. Now, we're better off, amen. And what Jesus has done is a whole lot better. But I'm saying, I, I really believe today, as I stand up here and preach, as all that I am in and of myself, I'm still just a, just a teenage boy that's a loser, bum, drughead, pothead, thief, and everything else standing before you today that God's taken and done something with, amen. amen. What I'm saying is remember, amen, remember you ought to be in hell. You said, I was raised in church. I never came from that. Well, my friend, what did you have to do with that? Right. Absolutely nothing. You could have been brought up that way. You could have been brought up. And I'm telling you, it's all by the grace of God. Amen. It's not of us. Hey, may God help us once again not to rejoice in our will worship. How much control we can display. How much more control I can display than you. What I, I can refrain from more than you can refrain from. I can make myself do more than you do. Amen. You ever been to a camp meeting like that? <laughs> Amen. Where a guy or two gets up. And I, but I'm telling you, friend, it's not about that. Hey, I'm telling you what, it's about drawing closer to Christ, amen. amen. It's about helping our heads, about keeping. And I, I'm not saying it's going to make you kind. Don't use your liberty for a cloak of lasciviousness, amen. Right. But I really believe that that grace will compel us to go the extra mile. Right. Amen. I believe that it will help us to do and overcome and live a life that will be pleasing to God. And I just pray that each of us could just search our hearts and if nothing else, be on guard that we don't do the right thing for the wrong reason. Don't do it for the brethren, amen? 
Well, i tell you what, it's so funny sometimes that sometimes you'll hear preachers tell another preacher what to do because there's another preacher that's trying to tell him what to do. You understand what I'm saying? I, I mean, I, I, just, I, I just got tickled at this. A couple years ago, I mean, even Brother Earwood, I just say it. Everybody was telling Brother Earwood, well, here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to do because somebody else was telling him what he needed to do. Well, I believe Brother Earwood's saved, probably called of God. I believe he could probably figure it out on his own. Amen? And you're being critical of somebody else telling what when you're telling. And I'm just saying, my hey, let, let, him, let him do what God says to do. And I know it's in the Word. Do you understand what I'm saying, though? Hey, I mean, praise God. Listen, just follow God, amen, through the Word of God, through the Spirit of God, amen. Don't be concerned about the brethren. Don't be concerned about making yourself. Man, just live for Jesus, amen. Love the Lord. Draw closer to Him. Draw closer. Love sinners. Love the brethren, amen. In other words, repent and get back to your first love, amen. amen. Hallelujah. All right, amen. I'm done.